What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day so far today. Um, getting into this episode of GH, um, I totally can't blame Nina for wanting to leave Port Charles at this point because ain't nothing really keeping her in that town. Now that she has no access to Wiley, Nell is dead. She doesn't know about Willow being her daughter. So there's really nothing keeping her there. You know, only thing I could really think of is Sunny and her job, but her and Sunny are not even technically a couple. And she can do Crimson remotely. You know what I'm saying? So I totally get why she would want to leave. Nobody in that town really like her like that anyway, except for Maxie, Britt, and Obrecht. That's pretty much about it. So, well, and Valentine. Um, and Sonny. That's pretty much about it. Curtis. Curtis, too. But still, it's like she doesn't really technically have any family family, like kids or nothing, that she know of. You know, like I said, she don't know about Willow. So I can see why she would want to go. Um... Because most of the people in that town, they don't do nothing but snark at her every time they see her. And it's going to be hard for her to see, you know, to be in the same town as Wiley and not be able to really, you know, see him like that or spend time with him. So I could, I get why she would want to go. Um, and Milan is beautiful. I ain't even going to lie. <laughs> I've never been to Milan, Italy in my life, but I've seen like people on reality shows go to it and pictures of it. And it looks fucking gorgeous. So I could totally understand why she would want to go there. Um, shit, I want to go. Um, <laughs> I, I, I get it. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I totally get why she would do that. But, um, Sonny was not, Sonny was not about to let her go. Sonny said, listen, you need to stay. Don't let nobody run you out of this town. You need to stay here and just, you know, keep on, keep it on. Pretty much. Um, Nina at the end of the day, she worried about what Michael and Willow are going to say to Wiley when he get older. You know what I'm saying? Like, the stuff that they're, she claims, oh, they're going to put things in his head, lies in his head. But what is what information is a lie, though? Everything that was printed in the Invader was everything that she's done. So none of it was really lies. So, you know, unless they add their own little revisionist history to it. But other than that, nothing that was printed was a lie. Everything in there was the truth. And that's what Wiley's going to learn when he get older. The truth. And I'm pretty sure Wiley's going to learn the truth about Michael. He's going to learn the truth about Harmony. He's going to learn the truth about Carly. He's going to learn the truth about Sonny. He's going to learn the truth about AJ. All of his family. He's going to learn things about them. That stuff that they've done. You know, it's not just Nina. It's all of them. So this is information he's going to, you know, get when he gets older. I mean, hell, it's all public knowledge anyway. So none of them can really hide the truth from him. You know, and I'm pretty sure Monica probably going to tell him some stuff <laughs> if she's still around, you know, Lord willing, that she's still around to tell him some stuff. So that boy is going to be well informed on everybody. That's what Nina has to think about. It's like it's not just you. They all have a history. You know, they could point the finger at her all they want to, but they all have dirt underneath their fingernails. They all do underneath the fingernails, on the palm of their hands, on the bottom of their shoe. You know, they got dirt everywhere, so sticks and stones. They could throw rocks all they want at her, but, you know, he's going to find out about all of them. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, Sonny wasn't trying to let his boo go. He said, no, nah, you're going to stay. He said, you're going you gonna to stay. Ain't no need to you running. Um, Sonny just didn't want her to go, you know. He's trying to build something, I guess, with her, and it ain't no sense in her going. My thought was, Sonny, let her go. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, let her go. If that's what she want to do. Bye bye. I wouldn't stop you. Um, I love Cynthia Watros though. I think she's an amazing actress. But I don't know why they saddled her with this Nina character. <laughs> but she need to change up some of her ways though, cause she do have a lot of delusional thoughts. Like she lives in sometimes in this little fantasy bubble, and that's like one of my biggest issues with this character. It's like. Be a bit more realistic, you know what I mean? Like, think logically instead of, like, thinking anything just, you know, like, you didn't do none of these things that they claim you did. You know, you did it. Own it, you know? Stop coming up with excuses as to why you did it. Just say, yeah, I did it. You know, you ain't got to say, I did it, but, because when you say, but, that means there's an excuse that's about to follow. I did it. That's all you need to say and keep it, keep it pushing. You ain't got to be, you know, oh, I did it because extenuating circumstances or my, I, 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 they don't need to know all that. Just say I did it. <laughs> just, 
Just own it. That's all you need to do. That's about it. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Sam was not playing with Mr. Cody. Sam was interrogation. Like, she was straight up interrogating the hell out of Mr. Cody. Um, Because she was wondering why Dante never mentioned Cody before. And my thing is with Sam, I'm like, what do you mean why he never mentioned him before? I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of people from Sam past she never mentioned. All them little ex-husbands that she had that she boosted. (laughs) That she fleeced. I'm pretty sure she ain't mentioned them by name. Um, and I'm pretty sure she got childhood friends and stuff that she went to school with that she never mentioned before that might pop up in the near future. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dante ain't got to mention every school chum that he's known. You know, he didn't expect to ever see Cody again. They lost touch. But she was interrogating Cody because, you know, when Dante and Cody were reminiscing, they were talking about how much trouble they got into back in the day. And, you know, Sam was under the impression that Cody was the bad influence on Dante. Cody said, "Uh uh-uh. He said, "Uh uh-uh. Let me stop you right there. He said, no, Dante got into a lot of trouble all on his own, all by his lonesome. Don't try to put that off on me. Um, You know, yeah, I ain't no saint, but don't try to put his troubles off on me and making my troubles. No, I didn't get him into all of that. He got himself into it. I don't blame him on that. Like, you ain't about to pass the buck over here. Um, But Dante pretty much made it clear to Sam, like, yeah. Cody, he's a troublemaker. He, you know, wherever he go, trouble follows. I feel like he's definitely going to be trouble. If they keep him around on the show, I feel like he's going to be trouble, but he might be the good kind of trouble. Um, They got good trouble, but then they got dark trouble. You know, you got to know the difference between the two because there is differences. And uh, apparently Cody has some little back, old back injury that um he kind of got back. You know, he messed his back up even more again when he fell into Brit and stuff like that. Um, But yeah, Sam was totally interrogating him, asking him, because she noticed he ain't had no ring on his finger. So she was like, you ain't got no wife? He said, nope, I'm free as a bird. She was like, you ain't got no kids? He said, nope. She was like, do you do skydiving and all this stuff for a living, or is it a side hustle? You know, he was telling her about various gigs that he take and stuff. Um, And she even offered him a job. She was like, you know, I know a job that'd be perfect, basically tending to the stables and stuff because her kids got horses and whatnot in the stable. But, you know, Dante was like, yeah, he wouldn't be good at that. A part of me felt like Dante was trying to get rid of him. Like Dante didn't want him to stay in Port Charles. But he made it clear, though, like Cody is not the be in one town forever kind of person. He likes to move around. And Cody admitted that he does like to do that. My question is, when the hell did Monica get horses and stables? Because Sam was like, oh, they got horses in a stable at, at their grandmother's house. Monica got horses on the property now? I guess that's something new she started doing for the kids, I guess. That's dope. Having horses and stables on your on your grandparents' property that you could just go ride and stuff. That's hot. I like that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't trust Mr. Cody. Some tell me he gonna be... Uh, a very bad influence on some people in Port Charles. Um, then they got to talking about Sonny because he found out that Dante is Sonny Corinthos' uh, son and whatnot. And he said that he knew the name Sonny because of the coffee and all the various other things. Um, so he know of Sonny. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. I'm ready to see what's what they're doing with the Cody character. I want to see like what kind of trouble is he going to be. Like, a good kind, dark kind. Like, I want to really know, like, what's his angle? And, like, what he running from? Like, what's his background? Because I know he got a bigger story than just him and Dante being at summer camp together and getting into trouble doing pranks. So, I'm pretty sure it's something more to it than that. If I had to guess, I'm pretty sure. So, anyway, moving on from that. Jocelyn wanted an explanation. She wanted a, an explanation from um, Cameron about what the hell's been going on with him. Because she was like, you've been seeming real shifty lately. <laughs> she was like, he's been acting funny lately. Like, and he was about to tell her. I think he was about to confess to her um, about Spencer's plan. But, of course, they get interrupted by Adam, which is Mar- uh, Joshua Bernard, Maurice Bernard's real-life son. Um, Adam wanted to apologize to Jocelyn. Because about, you know, his remarks about the sex tape and all that, after seeing her interview in The Invader, he felt he owed her an apology because it was brave of her to even talk about that. And he knew that had to be a rough experience for not only her, but Cam, too. And he felt like they were both brave for even speaking up publicly about it. 
So I'm glad that he apologized because he was acting like a little jackass the last time she seen him. You know, like a little smug little idiot. So I'm glad he learned something from reading the article and he apologized because that was the right thing to do. Because if he came back with some foolishness, I'm pretty sure either Cameron or Jocelyn or both would have knocked him on his ass if he came back with some more foolishness. So I'm glad he finally got some act right and he, you know, got some sense about him this time. Um, but since they got interrupted, Cameron decided not to tell Jocelyn about Spencer's plan. Instead, he just chalked it up to the stuff that's going on with Elizabeth as to why he's acting so weird and stuff lately because he's worried about her. Cameron better do something because we all know Jocelyn is a lot like Carly and you know how Carly react when people keep secrets from her and stuff like that. She doesn't react nicely. So I'm pretty sure Jocelyn probably won't react too kind to this either. She might forgive him, I'm sure, but she gonna be a little frosty about it when she find out that he's been keeping this from her all this time because she's ready to shut Esme down at this point. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, I love the scenes between Rory and Trina. I always do. I always enjoy those scenes. Like, they just be hanging out, just vibing and stuff like that. And the chemistry is definitely there. The chemistry between them is hot. Um, and I just feel like, you know, even though I don't know a lot about Rory or who he's connected to or what his backstory is, I really like the vibe between them. And I feel like his interest in her could be genuine. I feel it is so far. Um, and he's genuinely feeling her, you know, and I feel like he's a man. You know what I mean? Like, this is what happens when you drop a boy and get with a real ass man and that's a man right there you know he ain't with them games like spencer um and he's definitely helping to take her mind off that boy too because you can see she be blushing when she around him like she just be ogling that boy what well, that man um and she suggested you know they tried out a, a new food truck and stuff and you know he was all smitten he was like i can't uh, wait to see what else you teach me about and stuff i was like oh I'm pretty sure, Trina, both of y'all could teach each other a few things, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and they timing was on point because Taggart was just about to leave the house. As soon as he opened up the door, boom, spotted him on the porch. And you know Taggart, he was in full-on dad mode. He was like, oh, y'all can come in. I want to talk to him anyway. <laughs> I love how Taggart had Rory so nervous. Like, Rory was definitely nervous meeting Taggart and Portia, mainly Taggart, um, you know, Taggart and Portia just wanted to get to know him, like, ask him, you know, little, little simple questions, like, you know, what do you do outside of work, and what's your interests, your hobbies, all that type of stuff, you know, he was like, you know, he into working out, and swimming, and obviously spending time with their daughter, and they, they could tell, like, they could definitely tell both are smitten with each other, they could see it on both their faces, I love that Portia and Trina were so giggly about Rory, though. Like, Portia is loving it. She's loving the fact that her daughter is moving on from Spencer. Um, hopefully that maintains. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, I feel like Spencer is wasting his time trying to get back into Esme's good graces. I really feel like that. Because I understand he thinks that's the only way for this plan to work. But Esme's too smart for that. Like, she's working on a plan of her own at this point. And Spencer's, he just doesn't see that. Like, dude, you're not going to get her to slip up. I don't see it. Like, not unless he can figure out a way to be two steps ahead of this girl. Because she's about four steps ahead of him at the moment. So he need to catch up. Um, I hate it to see my girl Ava just put herself out there for Nicholas. Like, he wouldn't even kiss her. And I think the reason he didn't do that was because of guilt. Um, but I, I felt like he was gaslighting her in a way, talking about, oh, I was almost about to give up on our marriage, and I don't know if we can get back to where we was, and yeah, because you know that your ass messed up, that's why, and he messed up by inviting his girl into the house, you know what I mean, and taking her side over your wife, that's where you messed up at, then sleeping with the chick, yeah, there's no coming back from that. Um, but I hated to see Ava just bow down like that. You know, she just gave Nicholas everything he wanted, you know, like Spencer and Ava, I mean, Spencer and Esme could stay at Windermere and she's still going to give Spencer his money. I was like, no, I hated that. I hated to see Ava cry like that and try to like, that's why I cannot wait for her to find out the truth. 
I cannot wait for Ava to find out because she humbled herself. You know, she compromised herself for Nicholas for the sake of their marriage. And for him to do what he did, I'm like, yeah, I cannot wait for the truth to come out because I'm telling you now, when the truth comes out, I want Ava to go waiting to exhale Angela Bassett on his ass. I want her to burn everything he got. <laughs> I want Ava to burn his life literally to the ground. Burn it. Burn it down. I want her to take him financially to the cleaners. I, I, I just want her to leave Nicholas destitute. Just a shell of himself. Hell. Hell. I want her to take the prince title from him just for shits and giggles. That's what I want her to do. Because you know what? She deserve it at this point. She deserve it. She deserve to take him down. Um, You know, Spencer, he was, you know, wondering, like, why, es why Ava was doing all this. Like, was Ava really okay with Esme staying here? Ava was like, shit, I'm willing to suck it up for now. You know? Um, Because Ava want Spencer and Nicholas to mend their relationship. But I feel like when the truth come out, Ava, oof, hell hath no fury like Ava scorned, I'm telling you. And I'm here for it. I am so here for it. Um. Anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. I will see you all later. Peace.